This video tutorial will cover creating statistics for LAS datasets using ArcGIS Desktop, as is covered in Chapter 10 of the ebook, Working with LiDAR Using ArcGIS Desktop. To begin, we're going to overview what we're doing today. We're talking about statistics. If we're in our catalog and we take a look at our LAS dataset when we created it, we talked about this in a prior tutorial, you can come under the Statistics tab and you can take a look at statistics for the dataset as a whole. You can also, within this same tab, update those statistics or force recalculation. But again, that's the entire data set. I'm jumping to ArcMap here to show you. You can also find statistics for specific points of the data set by using the Identify button or using the Profile view. But this doesn't really give us statistics regarding the entire data set. And there is a way to do that by creating rasters and then creating a grid over our rasters and assigning points to the center of each raster. We can extract all of that information that we've created in raster statistics back to those points. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. So to start, I'm in ArcMap. I've got my Hopkinsville LAS data set in here, and I'm creating a new file geodatabase. And that'll be a good place to store all of the raster data that I'm going to create. Next, I'm going to make sure I have my filters set to all. And I'm going to go ahead and open up our toolbox. And the tool that we're going to be using today is called LAS Point Statistics as Raster. So it's found under the Data Management Toolbox and then under LAS Tools. And we'll go ahead and open up Point Statistics as Raster. And again, it's helpful to have the help on, on the right hand side to give you more information about the inputs for this tool. And you can see here there's a bunch of different methods we can choose from. These are different statistics that you might want to calculate. Each method that you choose will create a different raster. So you'd have to rerun the tool multiple times to create multiple different statistics. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm going to go ahead and set mine to start uh, by looking at pulse count with my input as Hopkinsville. I need to go and find that geodatabase that I just created and go ahead and name that new data set that you're going to create. And I set my cell size sampling value to be 1. And the tool's going to run. And when that raster pops up, I'm going to zoom in and take a look at what I have here. So you can see when you're zoomed in pretty far, and I'm going to drag my raster up to the top of my table of contents so we can get a really good look at it here. Uh, for each 1 meter by 1 meter pixel, uh, this method has total the number of pulses for each cell, and that's what gives us our raster values. So we're going to go through and run this tool multiple times using different methods, different point statistics methods, and just saving everything to that same geodatabase. And our next run through, we're going to do pulse count again, but this time we're going to use the default sampling value, which are 10 meter cells rather than 1 meter by 1 meter cells. And you can see this gives us a much uh, different type of result because our cell sizes are so much larger. And then just for fun, I'm going to come in here and do what I should have done at the beginning, change my map document properties to match that new geodatabase that I made at the beginning. That'll save me some time, so don't do what I did. Practice good data management and save yourself some time. So now it'll pop up with that geodatabase where I really want to be saving my new rasters automatically. And I sped that sequence up a little bit for you since we've already run the tool twice. And you can see when we use those 100 meter square uh, cells, we get a very coarse result. Probably wouldn't be super useful, um, just so you get an idea of how this tool works. So next we're going to start running through using the 1 meter cell size and uh, giving each raster a new name uh, corresponding to the method, all of the different statistics that are available to us in this tool. And again, I'm going to speed up some of these sequences as I go through. It's covered step by step in the book in detail as well. But we're going to just keep running and rerunning that tool, kind of running down the list there using those different methods. So we've done pulse count, three different sizes, point count at one meter. And then the next thing we're going to do is run predominant class at one meter. Then we're going to do intensity range at one meter. 
And again, you can always pause the video to slow down the sequence here if you need to. And you can see I made a few typos and mistakes and I went through and, and fixed them if you're really slowing it down and paying attention. Uh, and then we're also going to do the Z range at one meter. So this one meter Z range is not a super useful value, but representing the elevation difference um, f within the, the ground returns is really helpful. So I first changed my filters to ground to run this tool again, and I'm going to name it Z range ground. Everything else is the same, same method and cell size. And now I have an additional statistic as well. And you can see the difference here in the high values. And that's because we changed our filters to ground. So now we have all these wonderful statistics set as rasters, but we don't really have all the information in one place. And we can get it all actually into one table by creating fishnet points and a grid. And we do this in our data management tools toolbox, create fishnet. I'm going to go ahead and name my output feature class here. You can see I have a little typo there. I actually went back in and fixed it later. Um, we can set our template to be the same extent as our Hopkinsville layer, our whole LAS data set, so the extent will be exactly the same. And we're going to set our number of rows and columns to be 2,000. And our cell sizes to be one meter by one meter the same. We want it to be exactly the same as our rasters that we're using as our base data, the rasters we're going to extract from. And the last thing we're going to do is come down to the bottom of this dialog. We're going to change our, we want to make sure we create those label points. Those points are really key here for what we're going to be doing. And change our geometry type to a polygon for our grid. You click OK. And I, again, sped up the sequence. The tool may take a little while to run. If you zoom really, really far in on your results, and I'm going to change my fishnet and so we can see our raster underneath. You can see our it lines up perfectly with our raster grid, and there's a point in the center of each raster cell. So now what we're going to do is all the values for the different raster statistic rasters created underneath, we're going to extract. So we're going to use the extraction tool which is under the spatial analyst toolbox and our input points this is why those points were so key are, are what are called our fishnet labels and then input rasters you can select whichever rasters you want to have their values in your end data set this table that we're creating I would recommend you actually don't choose as many rasters as I did here because this tool took quite literally hours to run so I sped up the sequence for you I actually did not let it run all the way through so I didn't get data for all four million of my points um, but this is what your end result will look like this is what we were going for here so your table for those points now has attached to it values for each one of the rasters that you've extracted from and that can be very useful data which you can do quite a few things with um, and lastly, there is one more tool that's mentioned in the book, and I just want to make mention of it here as well. Under your data management tools and your LAS dataset toolbox, there is one more tool, the LAS dataset data statistics, and that offers you one more way to update statistics within the LAS dataset as a whole or create a text file that summarizes your LAS dataset statistics. So that's it for this tutorial. The tutorial for chapter 11, we're going to be covering classifying unassigned points in a point cloud. This video was produced by Virginia View, a consortium dedicated to promoting remote sensing, outreach, education, and research, with funding from the America View Consortium, in partnership with Virginia Geospatial Extension and GeoTED.